Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live. This will be the last Thursday of October 2021. And I am very pleased to share this last Thursday with you all. Welcome to our home studio. Um, I hope that you will be enjoying this tutorial as much as I have enjoyed preparing it for you. We are giving away Recipit earrings again today, as well as the choco stencil we will be using, a jar of choco paint and a pot of stencil of Paris. If you like our page as well as Recipit's page, that is step one. Share this video, this is step two. And in the comment section of this video, tag five friends. And then stand a chance, two lucky winners will each receive a pair of recipient earrings, proudly painted with choco paint, as well as a pot of stencil of Paris. The stencil we'll be using today and a color that, we've, that we are going to use today. So sit back, relax, be inspired and enjoy the session with me. First of all, um, we are going to work on MDF board, um, also called super wood. This can also be done on a wall, this technique. It can be done on a furniture piece. It can be done on tiles, um, wall tiles. The possibilities are endless. And this is like, uh, while I was busy doing this, I felt like I was walking down the streets of Italy with all the worn and colors. So enjoy this with me. The stencil I'll be using on this board, and this is also a lovely gift idea. If you want to give it as a gift to someone, maybe with a soap on it and a hand towel or a beautiful pot of, with, filled with a flower. Um, it's beautiful to set Christmas tables as Christmas um, under plates for your, for your Christmas table setting. So just think out of the box, see the session as inspiration and let the creativity flow from here. The stencil I'll be using is a choco paint stencil. The code is A323. I'm going to put the stencil down on my board. I'm not even going to secure it with masking tape because you will see this is a very creative, imperfect um, technique, but for the client and the user and the family member that also likes something that's perfect, this will also satisfy you. So I am going to use our stencil of Paris paste. This is something that we manufacture. I'm scooping out some stencil of Paris and I am applying it thick, imperfect on my surface. So thick, imperfect application on the surface. Remember, um, if you want that perfect application to rather work with stencil of Paris when there's no sudden change in temperatures. If the stencil of Paris dries too quickly, it's like plaster or cement, hairline cracks will appear. But if you do it late afternoon and you let it dry over cooling temperatures, no cracking will appear. Okay, so I'm doing this very imperfect, scraping it around, thick application. And for this technique, I'm not going to be worried if I'm working late or early. We are going to sand it later and if cracking does appear, it's going to um, be removed with a sanding. And that's also a way of getting rid of any cracks if you work in hot temperatures. So can you see there how beautiful, imperfect, but still perfect it is? And I will just make sure that I complete the entire board. Thick application and remove. And now you are going to allow for the stencil of Paris to dry. We often get questions, how do I clean my stencil? Everything that, water, uh, that charcoal manufactures is water-based, eco-friendly, non-toxic. So I will simply wash my stencil in some water. After use, 
I'm going to have to turn this around because the other side I've prepped already. So this you will now allow to dry. Depending on the thickness of the application as well as your temperatures, anything from two to four hours will be necessary. So this side has been prepped already. Next, I am not going to use paint brushes for today's tutorial. I'm using kitchen sponges. You can see they have worked already, they've worked hard. I dip them in some normal tap water And now to prevent contamination of your paint. So I'm going to dip my, my sponges in my paint colors now. But to prevent contamination, as tap water can contaminate paint due to imp the impurities in the, in the water, you can pour some paints out. Close your um, paint jars immediately so it doesn't get exposed to air for too long. And then work from poured out blobs of paint. I'm not going to do that because I paint all the time. My paint doesn't get time to rest. I'm dipping my sponge in my first color which is Divet and I completely cover my board with Divet. And this can be any color. Remember see me as inspiration and you use colors that you like and that fits your space and your decor style and your preference. So I'm simply dabbing and I'm going to continue doing this to the entire board. I just want to make sure that you understand the process and know what's happening. Okay, so this now you do to the entire surface. I have one that has been prepared already. And here it is. So my divet has dried on the surface. Very important when we paint, always allow your coats of paint to dry before you start applying the next coat. And now I'm going to be playful. So the colors I'm going to work with next is Danny Stair, Godfrey, and Vinya Stone. And I'm going to move them so that you can see nicely what I'm doing. And randomly with my damp sponges, I've squeezed out excess moisture, I dip. So this side I'm going to use for the darker color Danny Stair, that side for Godfrey's Glimpse, and I have a clean sponge for the neutral Vinyasto. And I'm starting to play. No paintbrush is needed. This can be a stunning technique on a wall surface. The only thing that I will do differently is you get huge grouting sponges from hardware stores. So the larger your surface, as with paint applicators, brushes, the larger your applicator becomes. So then you will just use a larger sponge to make it more easy. Okay, next, I'm dipping the other side in Godfrey's Glimpse and I let the two colors meet each other. And I alternate between the darker and the lighter. And you dab, 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 dab. I take 
with my clean sponge. And I move now to some vineyard stone. Just to create some lighter areas. Oh, can you imagine this on a piece of furniture? On the chest of drawers. And the darker again. And what I'm going to do next, so here I'm playing between the two shades. And can you see there where the vineyard stone sits in those grooves and crevices, how beautiful it is? I now just want to create some lightness with the divot. So I'm going to push it in, in those crevices and grooves. And this is just having fun. So I push it in. I take my darker sponge and I dab it on the top so that the light stays behind in the crevices. So I'm going to stone on certain areas. And I am playing, having fun, and I'm busy creating. So something that is going to happen quite soon is we are going to release our book. Uh, I have mentioned it before, but the book is done. It's been printed. It's been delivered. Um, so this is something that is exciting for the month of November. Um, so keep your eyes peeled to our social media pages. It will be announced soon. Um, it will be announced also on our pages where I will be um, present to sign your book and when. And that will also be a lovely Christmas idea, idea with our authentic choco story. And I'm playing and creating in those grooves. I want to add some vineyard stone again before I continue with the other colors. And if I would use this as an underplate, I would apply a coat of our clear glaze. Just follow the instructions on the lid. And then you can, it's food safe, first of all, so you can even use this as a cheese board, how beautiful. And you can also rinse it under a tap with some sunlight liquid, dry it immediately and um, use it. Even if you haven't applied the glaze, you would be able to do it, but the glaze will just apply an extra coat of protection. And everything is eco-friendly and food safe. Okay, yeah, I'm going to add some more white again. No paintbrush, just your kitchen sponges. Don't throw them away ever again. They paint beautifully. Okay, and now I'm going to just lightly dab with some vineyard stone here and there to make it lighter. And I'm working on weight on weight because this is a technique, this is not straightforward painting. And this is the best way of blending colors when you work with wet colors. And dab, dab, dab to blend colors together. Make sure your edges are always perfect. And now for the last step, I'm simply going to sand it a bit. Just want to wipe 
that some white there. So contrasts are best for a paint technique. We work with light and dark. Okay, and now just to emphasize the detail on this board, I'm using my sandpaper. It's a hundred grit, 80 grit, sorry. It has been a long week. <laughs> That's the number 80. I keep it rolled up. This is the easiest way of sanding, especially if you have to do it on a flat surface. It creates a flat effect. Just to bring out some white of the stencil of Paris here and there on my wet paint. If you want to fix something like there where I've touched my board and voila. Stunning gift idea, stunning idea for a cheese board, a stunning idea for a focal wall, a stunning idea for a furniture piece, stunning idea to set your Christmas table. And I'll be back next week, which will be November 2021. Until then, look after yourself. Have the most creative last days of October 2021 and stay safe. It was lovely being with you. Till next time.